Visiting a national park is a wonderful way to spend a weekend. Being a family-friendly pastime that anyone can enjoy, millions of people visit national parks around the country every year. Most people leave the park and recommend the trip to their friends, but some never get the chance. While national parks are inviting people of all ages to enjoy a haven of nature, they can also be a deadly labyrinth. These parks can easily cover millions of miles of untamed woods, becoming a seemingly endless maze in which you may never find your way out. This is a one in a billion chance, of course, but that still leaves some who will fall victim. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at three unlucky people who walked into the park and seemed to vanish into thin air, never to be found again. Sandra Johnson Hughes' Disappearance Sandra Johnson Hughes disappeared into the Sierra National Forest, located on the western slope of central Sierra Nevada in central California. She was last seen entering the Johnson Meadows on July 4, 2020. An extensive search ensued following her disappearance, but only more mystery was uncovered. Hughes was 54 years old when she moved from Hawaii to California, a month before her disappearance. She began planning her camping trip as a way to enjoy nature and escape the confines of her home during everything that's currently happening. Before her trip, she was extensively trained in managing the wilderness as she trained to be a park ranger in college, making her disappearance all the more curious. Her family reported that they had last heard from her on June 26th. The search began on July 5th after Hughes's belongings were found in peculiar disarray. Her niece posted a call for help on Facebook encouraging others to help search for her aunt, stating that her campsite was found with her belongings and was quite disheveled. Things were thrown about all over, almost as if her car and belongings had been emptied out carelessly. Furthermore, her niece claimed that she would never leave her campsite a mess, even a piece of litter on the ground would bother her. The Madeira County Sheriff's Office then followed suit and openly asked the public to aid in the search for Sandra Hughes. Hughes was described as someone who liked to move around a lot. She had no children and was twice divorced, giving her the ability to uproot at a whim and live largely without restraint. There was a peculiar encounter on July 4th. It was reported that a group of hikers came in contact with Hughes. They claimed that she was walking barefoot with a sizable bruise on her face. The hikers were rightfully concerned and offered her help, to which she declined. They insisted on providing some kind of medical assistance, but she again rejected their offer and continued on her path. Her family described her as someone who was very organized, making this behavior highly unusual and disturbing. On the 5th of July, there were more mysterious circumstances. Hughes's car was found lying in a creek that leads into Chiquito Lake. Authorities on the scene theorized that the vehicle was traveling at less than 20 miles per hour when it crashed into a tree and rolled into the ravine. This is extremely unusual for a crash. At such a low speed, it is hard to imagine why Hughes would have crashed headfirst into a tree. Typically, at this speed, the driver has great control over the vehicle. This finding led the search to intensify its efforts. Nearly a dozen separate sheriff's departments joined the effort, assisted by rescue dogs, volunteers, and helicopters from the California Air National Guard to locate Hughes. Together, they combed the forest working day and night to find any sign of Sandra Hughes. None was found. The last sighting to reportedly see Sandra were two hunters passing through the woods near the Portuguese Overlook. The men claimed they saw her leaning against a tree along Road 5S01 near Besaw Road. At the time, they did not recognize her, and it was only upon returning from their trip that they recognized her from a missing person flyer. The hunters remarked that she did not appear distressed or in need of assistance. However, upon seeing her picture from the missing person's flyer, they said that she was visibly thinner. We can only hope she returns home safely. Stuart Isaac Disappearance Stuart Isaac disappeared in Yellowstone National Park on September 24, 2010. Stuart Isaac was a 48-year-old family man 
native of the Republic of Palau in the Pacific. On September 6, 2010, he set out to enjoy a cross-country trip to Yellowstone National Park. He drove approximately 32 hours from his Burtonsville, Maryland home and began his solo camping trip. The last contact he made with his family was a simple note that he left, informing them of his planned trip. Isaac spent several weeks away from home, and it was not until September 24th that he was determined to be missing. We know that, on September 26th, Isaac's black 2009 Lexus was parked at Craig Pass, without a single hiking trail nearby. His car was found by the National Park Service during a routine patrol of the area. The car, which sported a vanity license plate reading Bellock, was unlocked with the keys inside it. Whether Isaac had been the one to park the car here, or if he was even in the vehicle at this time, is entirely unknown. Craig Pass, where the vehicle was located, is a rather odd place for any car to be parked. Standing at an awe-inspiring elevation of 8,262 feet, it serves as a mountain pass on the Continental Divide. Located roughly eight miles east of the Old Faithful Geyser, it is rather far from any moderately trafficked route on the Yellowstone National Park's Grand Loop Road. This unusual finding is what prompted local authorities to determine that Isaac was indeed missing. Upon finding Isaac's vehicle, a large-scale search ensued immediately. Authorities determined that Isaac could have been lost for a total of 20 days when the car was finally located, considering that no spotting of him had been reported since September 6th. The National Park Service enlisted the surrounding sheriff's departments and the California Air National Guard to assist in the search. Together, along with rescue dogs, volunteers and helicopters, they combed through the nearby areas to find any evidence of Isaac. Not a sign was found. The last reported contact by Isaac was to a former high school classmate, Matsu Evans. Records show that Evans spoke with Stewart for two hours on September 24th, almost immediately before his disappearance. This only added mystery and confusion to the investigation. The call was made at 6.30pm, according to her time zone in Guam, but this would have been roughly 3.30am in Isaac's time zone. Evans remarked that during their phone call, she felt something was off. When being interviewed by investigators, she said of the call, I was kind of surprised to hear from him because he seldom made calls. We text each other and we email. Now I know that he's missing, why would he call me two days before something happened? However, during the call, he did not allude to being in any serious distress and simply informed her that he was on his way to Yellowstone for a relaxing cross-country trip. What made the encounter even more curious to Evans was that she never knew Isaac to be an outdoorsman of any sort. He did not seem to be experienced in hiking or even to be an occasional purveyor of nature trails. Due to the unique circumstances of Isaac's disappearance, many have speculated that he had planned to disappear on the trip. The mysterious final phone call to a loved one and a note left for his family aligns with the typical procedures for someone contemplating to end their life. Let's hope he is found one day. Bruce Pike Disappearance Bruce Pike disappeared in Yellowstone National Park on August 2, 2006. The disappearance of Bruce Pike is perhaps the most mysterious disappearance. Very little is known of Pike with seldom information released to the public regarding who he was and how he went missing. Yellowstone is one of the most famous and most frequently visited national parks in the continental United States. It receives an estimated 4 million visitors annually, and that number only seems to increase with every passing year. Every single day, there is likely to be about 11,000 people in the park at any given time. Holding its spot at number one, it is the world's first national park and a UNESCO World Heritage Site. With the enormous landscape stretching over 2 million acres, it is common for tourists to find themselves lost or to wander off their original path. However, these people are almost always found within a few days or even hours, as the park is so heavily trafficked. Only three people have ever been lost to be never found in Yellowstone National Park. Bruce Pike just happened to be one of them. 
What we know was Pike was last seen at the Indian Creek campground on August 2, 2006. His car was found to be abandoned nearby. His story was not covered by the media and there is no public record of any family members asking for help to find him. Despite the seeming lack of interest, mysteriously enough, the Texas authorities are participating in an ongoing investigation of his disappearance. He has never been seen or heard of since. But what do you make of these three disappearances? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.